Good evening all, and welcome. Before the video begins, I just want to say that I have launched a new video over on my second channel, if you care to watch it. I'll leave a link in the description if you would like to check it out. It would mean a lot to me, but you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. But anyway, without further ado, it's time to get comfortable. Grab your flashlight and let the darkness take control. I've only recounted this story a few times, and only to my close friends. Everything I say is entirely true, as I have no reason to lie. First, a little backstory. I have always been sensitive to different energies, for lack of a better word. Ever since I was little, I would always be terrified of things such as dark closets and corners of rooms, just like any other kid. The thing that made it different was the fact that I could see dark shadows or full-bodied apparitions sometimes when I had a feeling of unease. My grandmother also shared this gift and sees these figures in great detail and can freely interact with them as well. Anyway, moving on. Ever since I was around nine years old, I have slept on my stomach with my blanket firmly tucked around every part of my body. I began sleeping this way because of the figures I would see in that particular house. But that's another story. The instance I'm working on sharing happened 13 years ago. My family had recently moved to West Virginia, and a lady from our church graciously offered a house that she owned to rent for a great price. It was a very nice two-story house, with only half of the basement being beneath the ground, as the other acted as a garage. As a lot of the basements are, this one was unfinished and only acted as a storage for a few months before my parents decided to convert it into a bedroom. Meanwhile, I shared one of the smaller bedrooms with my sister. Eventually, the downstairs was finished, and I was given the opportunity to move into the master bedroom my parents already slept in. I was ecstatic, a room of my own. Little did I know this was the room in the house, with most activity. Up until this point, I hadn't had any bad experiences in the house, just creaking in the hallway late at night, which I assumed was the house settling. You know, normal house noises. I get settled in and get a new queen size bed that was a major upgrade from my twin sized bunk bed. My parents positioned all the furniture so that the bed ended up catty-cornered in such a way that my entire room was visible for the average person who slept on their back, which I did not. After a few nights of settling into my new sleeping atmosphere, I became very comfortable and proud that I had my own room with a huge comfortable bed. Those feelings soon left, when I began to hear something like the sound of footsteps, walking down the hallway on a nightly basis, stopping outside my door, every time. A few months pass, and the footsteps become less of a normal occurrence, until the most horrid night of my teenage life happened. I was soundly asleep, until I woke up suddenly with a feeling of unease. I didn't hear anything, so I decided to just go back to sleep. I was looking around my room, and it proved fruitless, as nobody was there. About an hour later, I still hadn't made it back to sleep, so I turned over, and I laid there for about 10 more minutes and still didn't find rest. And this is when the nightmares began. I heard the footsteps in the hallway again, creeping slowly 
and occasionally stopping. The kind of footsteps that wouldn't be a result of a midnight potty break, which my mother was prone to. This particular night, she was sleeping in my older sister's room with her, as my dad worked third shift, and she didn't want to be in the basement room alone. The footsteps continued as usual, until they stopped at my door. I thought for sure I was done for, as a feeling of terror overtook my entire body, and chills overcame me from head to toe. I decided to cover my head with my blanket, knowing that if something was going to hurt me, my comforter wouldn't help much. An eternity later, I uncovered my head and laughed at myself. I was being irrational, and just needed to get back to sleep. I ignored the bad feeling. It never really left, but I went to sleep shortly after turning over and tucking my blanket in as usual. That is when I heard paper shuffling on my dresser. I should note that I fall asleep with the fan on. It's basically a small jet engine that doesn't oscillate at all, but does put out some winds. I uncovered my head after turning over, and sure enough, papers were moving on my dresser. But I knew it wasn't my fan making the move, as I would have heard them move earlier in the night. Almost as soon as I came to this conclusion, the papers erupted off the dresser, scattering all over my floor. I was ready to call my mum at this point, but was immediately paralysed in fear when my soccer trophies began to shake and leap from the dresser as well. No way could my fan, which was pointed directly at me, create a gust that far across my room to move trophies that weighed at least a pound. I promptly composed myself and ran across the hall after ripping open my door and calling for my mother. She came back to my room with me, and I fell asleep immediately as she held me, not knowing why I was scared, but never alerted to anything out of the ordinary at all. We moved into a house, and everything was really quiet for the first six months or so. The neighbours told us that the people who lived there before had moved after their teenage son, had died in a motorcycle accident. Then after that first six months, my dad died. Not in the house. And after that, stuff started to happen. I would have friends sleep over, and one night my friend woke me up because she said there was a young guy standing in my bathroom. So I went and checked, and nothing was there. Over the next few years, just about any friend that stayed over the night had said that they saw a tall, blonde guy just walking around the house. We did have a few other things happen, like a wine glass was on the counter and it broke. No one was touching it. It just shattered on the counter. Another time during the winter, we had the heater on, and my room was always the warmest in the house and it was ice cold as you walked across my bedroom to the bathroom that was connected. The creepiest thing was when my boyfriend was sleeping on the couch in the middle of the night, and he said he woke up to a young guy pushing him off on the floor. He said the guy didn't say anything, but my boyfriend at the time knew that he had to leave as he did. He wouldn't stay at my place after that, my mum also had a huge collection of glassware. She had so much stuff, there weren't many places to put it. So we just set them on the counter. The wine glasses had been sitting there for a while, and no one had touched them. It hadn't just come out the dishwasher or anything like that. Basically, she bought it and put it on the counter and never touched it again. When it broke, no one was near it. Only me and my mum were there, and we were both at least ten feet away. Could it have been something like a crack in the glass? Maybe. 
but when it shattered by itself, we were very weirded out, and it was just one of the many strange events that happened in that house. I get home from my job as a server at midnight. One of my roommates was in the Navy and was deployed at the time and the other one was at his girlfriend's house. I cook myself dinner, and as I'm cooking, my dog starts growling and barking towards the middle of the room at nothing. This is especially weird because she never, ever barks. She was a rescue, and I brought her as a sense of security when I was home alone. I'm a female, and could never get her to bark at anyone. I dismiss her barking as odd, but I finish cooking and eat. I start to clean, and turn the sink on because it takes forever to get hot. But right when I turned around, the sink turned off on its own. Again, I think it's odd, but I really don't think it's worth freaking out over. The hair on the back of my dog is standing up straight, but no one is home, and it's midnight. So I figure I'd just tough it out, even though I was beginning to get a little spooked. After cleaning, I go into the bathroom and sit on the sink to pluck my eyebrows. My bathroom was small, with the sink immediately to the right as you enter, with the toilet next to it bathtub at the end, and toilet paper dispenser directly across from the toilet. It was a really narrow room, so you could reach the toilet paper while sitting. So the way I was sitting, the toilet paper dispenser was behind me, and after two or three minutes, I hear a really weird noise behind me. I turn around, and I shit you not. The whole roll of toilet paper was unravelling as fast as hell, like someone was pulling it. I noped the hell out of that bathroom. The door was closed and it had no windows, so it couldn't have been a breeze. I put a leash on my dog, and ran out of that apartment faster than Usain Bolt. By the time this happened, it was already 2am. None of my friends were awake so I spent the night sitting outside of the door to my apartment. When I went back in, the whole roll of toilet paper was on the ground, and the roll was probably three quarters full. I'm talking about a good five to ten meters of paper. After that day, I never had an odd experience quite like that again. But one of my roommates did mention that a few times he would come home, and find every door and cabinet in the place open, when he specifically remembered closing them and leaving them that way when he left. This was when I was on vacation out of state, and our other roommate was still deployed. I was at the army base Soest in West Germany, as it was. A still, dark autumn evening. It must have been warm, because it was the kind of temperature you didn't notice. I was 13, and my mate 15 was just dossing about before we had to go in. Behind the flats where we live was a green area with a play area, only one street light, so it was very dark compared to our streets and the well-lit main route through the camp which was about 80 to 100 meters away from where we were walking. No traffic, nothing. It was never busy, and this was on a weekend evening, so literally no traffic, and no one out, as far as we could tell anyway, which suited two teenagers just fine. Bear with me, this is important. So we're heading between our respective blocks of flats, and into the darkened park area. We stopped dead. On the main road moving right to left was a figure, vaguely person-shaped, but undulating and waving, like cloth underwater. 
it glided along to the middle of the road. Based on what it obscured behind us as it moved, I estimate it to be between 8 to 10 feet long, but at the very least, it was larger than an average sized man. This shape, this thing, was not walking. There was none of this slight up and down motion of walking. It just glided, smoothly, at a fast walking pace. It was black. Not someone wearing black clothes. It was midnight black. It was a hole cut into the night. No reflections, no shadows or shades, just solid blackness. It seemed like a lifetime as I soaked this detail up. In reality, it couldn't have been more than a few seconds. I whispered to my friend, Do you see that? He replied, Yeah. And the thing then changed direction towards us. The last image I have before we broke into a run was it rising up as it came over the curb. This is what makes it real for me. This is something that had mass, that obeyed at least something of the physical world. It moved from the brightly lit road into the darkness in which we stood. We broke and ran for our lives. Back on our street and into my mate's block. Then my friend bolted back to his own home, leaving me wondering how the hell I was going to get to my block. After a while, the fear of repercussions from my dad for being late overrode my fear of what might be out there in the night. So I ran eyes straight ahead, the ten or so meters to my own front door. I was in too much trouble for being late to say anything when I got home. Sometimes when I'm walking, and the night is warm and still and quiet, I think about it, and I wonder what I'd do if I ever saw it again. Run away, or face it down, and maybe solve a 30-year-old mystery. Honestly, I just don't know. So this happened a couple of years back, but it's still something that to this day, I really can't explain. We were staying at my parents' home visiting for the summer. We've had a lot of other paranormal events happen during our stay there, but never to this level. So everyone was already on edge and discussing all of the weird things that had been going on in the house. The house at the time was full of children, ranging from ages one to six. I had left my baby on the bed in the room, and we had been I had left my baby on the bed in the room we had been staying at, which was down the hallway from the living room. He was sleeping, so I decided to leave him on the bed and talk with the rest of my family who were all crowded in the living room. In the middle of our discussion, I hear my son cry out from the room. Thinking nothing of it, I get up and walk the couple of steps to the bedroom door which I had left open. As soon as I was in the frame of the door, I froze, standing there, seemingly leaning over my son, was a black outline of a man. There was no real face or anything. The baby continued to scream, but I could not move, and then out of nowhere, I hear the voice of a young girl whispering my name in my ear. I screamed, ran into the room and grabbed my child, and passed him to my chest. My husband ran into the room and saw me crying, and immediately panicked, and asked me what happened. But I couldn't explain it. He led me out to the room and tried to calm me down. When I told him what I saw, and what I had heard, he immediately told me to pack my things, and that we were going to leave the house that afternoon. We saw the figure of the man a couple more times, 
but it was never as terrifying as having him that close to my child. I am a middle-aged man and have had experiences with the paranormal for all my life. I've dealt with all kinds of entities. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it's true. This particular incident was astral projection. During one of my outer body experiences, I was flying over Casper, Wyoming, when I literally slammed into a young lady who was also flying over the city. She told me she was sent to find me. I was a little more than confused to be honest. I asked her why she was sent to find me, and she replied that her mother had sent me because she needed my help. The next thing I knew, my alarm clock was going off, and I was back home. I just assumed that I had dreamt the whole thing. Three days later, my car stalls in front of a small apartment building. I go up to one of the units to see if I could use their phone to call my boyfriend. Now keep in mind, this was before cell phones were a thing. Anyway, I knock on the door and nearly fall backwards in shock. The person standing at the door was the same girl I ran into in my dream. She looked at me with the same look of shock and confusion and whispered my name. I simply nodded yes and said, you must be Zoe. She invited me in and introduced me to her mother. Her mother was more than excited and bewildered to see me as she had been looking for me. A friend of hers had told her that I could help her find a loved one that she had been trying to find. I happened to know the loved one and was able to reconnect the two after nearly 10 years. Now fast forward five years or so. I was living in Denver, Colorado when I was once again out of my body and flying over the industrial part of the city when I landed in an alley. I met a woman with flaming red hair and was dressed in a leather type cat suit. Her name was Joan. Joan told me that God had sent her to help her with her ministry. She was a minister for the gay community at the time, and I thought that was obscured considering I was a gay man. And why would God want me to help her ministry? Exactly three days later, I was at work waiting tables, when all of a sudden, guess who came through the door of the restaurant? It was Joan. I shit you not, she walked right up to me and handed me her business card. She winked at me and called me by name and insisted that I call her when I got off work. Out of curiosity, I did call. I was apprehensive at first, but figured there had to be a reason we had met three days after my dream or whatever it was. Joan told me she had a dream where she was fishing and God spoke to her that she was about to reel in a fish, the likes she had never seen. She said that God told her I was exactly what I needed for her ministry. And that is when I knew it was more than just a dream. I told Joan about my experiences with the paranormal and about how I would meet others on these flights or whatever, and then meet that person exactly three days later. Joan told me I was a very prophetic and gifted seeker. I kind of laughed it off at first. She told me about her ministry and that she was a deliverance minister. She told me she had dealt with demons and that is why she needed me. I was so not cool with that as I had many experiences with the demonic since childhood. Joan told me that I had what she called the gift of discernment. That is one of the reasons I was always under demonic attack, because they knew I knew their names, and that is why they have never been able to harm me. When I would have these run-ins with the demonic, 
I would call them by name and send them away. Fast forward a few weeks, Joan asked me to sit in on a deliverance session that she was going to have with a young drag queen from the neighborhood. I reluctantly agreed to do so. And when I arrived, I was surprised to see the drag queen was a co-worker of mine. As the sessions began, this little tiny flamer of a guy began to speak in many voices. I about shat my pants right there and then. I literally began to climb into the back of the couch and up against the wall just to get away from this guy. Joan began to talk to the demon and demanded it to leave the young man at once. The demon hissed and laughed at her, telling her she had no authority. Joan spoke calmly, yet firmly. Then she informed the demon its name gave her authority over it. Again, it mocked her and it refused to give her its name. Keep in mind, I'm still against the wall in utter horror. This is not Hollywood. This is real shit. And my heart was pounding so badly, I thought it would shatter my rib cage. Then out of nowhere, the name of the demon popped into my head. And without even knowing, I yelled it out. That was when the realization of why I was there hit me like a freight train. I stepped off the couch and stood next to Joan. I was still shaking like a leaf, but again I spoke the demon's name. Joan then continued with her deliverance session and used the demon's name to drive it out of the poor little guy. Now I know that this sounds like something straight out of a B horror movie, and I would rather it were. However, these are all true events. I have so many more stories to share with all of you, but that is for another time. Back to my original question though. So, is what I experienced while flying astro projection or something else? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Me and my brother have never been very close. Different tastes, different people, and it's just never worked. When we were younger, we used to tolerate each other. But what happened when we were older helped us get a bit more reconnected. We were round my parents' house for the holiday season, and we were just doing the Christmas gift exchange. Now bear in mind, we are both two single men in our early 20s, him being two years older. After the exchanging of the gifts, and we were moving on to dinner, the family were having a very pleasant conversation in the dining room. We were all chatting, just talking amongst ourselves, and in the middle of enjoying our feast, when out of nowhere, we hear some sounds from upstairs. We look at each other and stop eating our food. We look up and wait. We hear it again. It sounds like someone was running upstairs, but not very far. They'd run a few steps and stop run a few more steps and stop. We all sat there in a stunned silence and my brother looked at me in the eye and I looked back at him. This was a sign that we had to go up. And so we quietly pushed our chairs back and made our way upstairs. I was getting quite anxious getting to the final step as I was nervous as to what I would find. When we got to the room, no one was there, and there was nothing. We waited quietly to see if the sound would resume, but it did not. Just as we were making our way downstairs, commenting on how strange it was, we heard it once more, this time coming from our parents' room. So over we went, and ran into the room, brandishing candlesticks, ready to attack whoever had entered our home. But again, there was no one here. 
Now, it is important to note that my parents have an ensuite bathroom. As my brother had gone in ahead, I was clearing the room, and he had just turned the corner to check out the ensuite bathroom. That he jumped, and I saw him physically jump in midair from the fright, and he dropped his candlestick and stubbed his toe. He said that he saw a ghostly image of a little girl, who vanished as soon as he opened the door. He was taken very much by surprise, he said, but I didn't see anyone. We had lived in this house for a long time as children, and never had we experienced anything outlandish or paranormal. I wasn't sure if my brother was pulling my leg or not, but his reaction seemed very genuine. I'm not entirely convinced, but there's no reason to lie. I've always had a deep fascination with the paranormal, and before, he did not. But since then, we've gotten to speaking about it, and have even planned making little trips to see if we can experience anything together. I suppose in some sense, it was a good thing, but I'm still not sure if my parents' home is haunted or not. They claim to have never seen anything of the like, either. When I was growing up, I would constantly hear stories about my mum's brothers, who had passed, and my dad's parents and sister who were also late. I would always wonder what it would be like to meet them. Now bear in mind, I'm brown and a practicing Hindu. So when it comes to those that are deceased, our scripture says that they become part of, say, your guardian angel. But I digress. My mum's brother had been publicly and brutally murdered with no witnesses, and his case file had conveniently vanished at the time of investigation, which was two years before my birth. This troubled my grandparents and parents because they never did get justice for him, and it hurt because of how young he was. My mum's other brother had died due to a terminal illness at a young age. Around the time that I was 10, I would get sick every three months like clockwork. One of these instances, I had come down with a bout of flu, and my fever was extremely high. It was around 1 or 2 a.m. when I woke up one night, unable to sleep well. So in my delirium, I threw the covers off and swung my legs off to the side of my bed, to face the mirror that sat across from me. Putting my head down for a few minutes, I looked up into the mirror, and there was a man dressed in white, smiling at me, and he's sitting in a similar position to what I am. But he's so very tall well kept, and seems familiar, but I'm not sure who he is. In shock, I stare into the mirror, and then look to my side, then back into the mirror, and see no one is there. I don't tell anyone about this at all, till one day we're flipping through old family albums, and my mum finds one of her murdered brother, and she goes, that's him. The colour drained from my face, and my mum asked me what was wrong. I tell her that that's the man I saw sitting next to me. To which she smiles and says, well, I'm glad he's watching over you. Over the years, I would constantly see him in our house. He would even sit and watch me pray at times, and I felt safe. But one day I realised that with good, there comes evil. It was my cousin's wedding in the year 2006. I was around 13, and I have vitiligo, which is where certain parts of my skin lack pigment. I was placed on an official treatment that involved sun exposure for certain amounts of time. So in the flurry of the wedding preparation, 
I would have to do this every day at my uncle's house, amidst everything. It was also the school holidays, so everyone would hang out together which was great. Anyway, one day I'm sitting outside and my little cousins were playing in the yard. Now a little backstory on my uncle's house. The house had been vacant for a while while they had moved into another city, and before they had a tenant that was a bit unsavoury. We weren't exactly sure what happened on the land or property, but the house had always made me uneasy. I would also always see shadows and hear things, but ignored it because I didn't want to seem crazy. So, the day in question was hot, but I had only been outside for around five minutes, when out of the corner of my eye I see this thing. It's hunched over and bent and twisted, and it's moving between the house and the road. I froze, shocked for a few seconds, before I call my cousins and say it's time for lunch, only thinking I needed to get them to safety. Then I go back outside and once again there it is. It's disgusting form evident right there, and me not knowing how to deal with this, I'm standing there dumbfounded. This was yet another instance. I kept quiet about it, because I didn't want anyone to think that I'd officially lost it. It was then that I realised I was sensitive to energies, as well as spirits. I can barely go to a hospital, yet alone a funeral home without getting a migraine. A few years pass, and I have a good few more encounters with things of the unsavoury nature and eventually I confide in my mother about everything. She sits there shocked, and so does my sister. But then my sister says, wait, mum, remember when she was a baby and I saw our uncle playing with her on her bed? That's when I sat there shocked, and my paws stood on end as my sister said, when I was a baby, she saw my uncle teasing me, and I was on the bed baby talking to him. With prayer, my instincts grow, and without they fade. As the years have passed, the bad outweighed the good, and I stopped caring, especially after my grandmother passed away. I'm still as sensitive, and I always say that's why I tended to have anxiety and depressive episodes, but I ignore it now. I hope that I don't spot anything evil or unsettling. Although, I have more stories, I shall keep them for a later time. This is one of two paranormal experiences I've had, that I've had a hard time wrapping my head around. I've suffered from insomnia, as far back as I can remember. I was in second grade, and it was really early in the morning. I think around five or six. I had a little TV on my nightstand, and was definitely watching Lord of the Rings on VHS. I had to turn the volume up quite loud, because my ceiling fan always made a ruckus through the night. I was super into the movie when all of a sudden, all of the sound around me started to slowly fade away. I remember this, because I became confused and reached to turn up my TV thinking it had broken but then I realised the sound of the fan had faded with it. The only way I can describe it is comparing it to someone turning down the volume on a car radio. I was suddenly overwhelmed by an intense feeling of euphoria. I have never experienced anything like it. I absolutely cannot describe how utterly at peace I felt. I was able to comprehend what was happening and then it clicked in my head that I was dying. Keep in mind that I'm in second grade, so this is a pretty intense conclusion. But I knew it. I rolled over onto my back, and prepared to accept my fate. That's when I saw it. There was a large white figure in my doorway, just hovering and pulsating a white aura. I quickly panicked, and began calling out for my brother, as his room was across the hall. 
The figure glided to the end of my bed and just sat there watching. I'm not really sure how much time passed, but the figure suddenly vanished. Sound returned, and the euphoria disappeared. I jumped out of bed and ran into my brother's room, where I practically flew into his bed. He woke up, and when he saw how panicked I was, he began to panic as well. I was hysterical, and just kept telling him it was a ghost. We did what any other kids would do. We would hide under the covers. After a while, we got anxious, and I bravely made a peephole in the blanket to check the time on the clock, hoping it would be daylight soon. 5.30. It was 5.30 in the morning. Then the phone rang and rang and rang, and we began to panic even more, and then silence. Once again it began to ring, and ring, and ring, and we jumped out of the bed, and took turns running from light switch to light switch, until we had a little path to the living room. We got to the living room, and watched cartoons until my mother woke up. She was livid, yelling at us for being up so early. I told her that we saw a ghost, which only made her more upset. My brother, who was always tormenting my irrational fears, got mad at her, and started telling her that this wasn't a joke, and that it wasn't my imagination. I started telling her to check the phone, because I saw the ghost around 5.30, and it must have been the ghost calling. She went to check the phone, and went to the other room for a while. Suddenly, she wasn't upset anymore. When we asked her if it was a ghost, she said it was a telemarketer. She was so nice about it, and she let me sleep in her room for the next few days. I thought maybe since it was my brother's birthday that day, that she didn't want to argue, but she never let me sleep in her room after that again. I got home from school on the 15th, and I saw the ghost in the early hours of the 13th. My mum called me to the family room, and told me to sit on her lap, and that she needed to tell me something. I obliged. My great-grandma passed away at the hospital at 5.30am, and the phone calls were my grandma calling to notify us. Me and my great-grandma were extremely close. To this day, I get chills thinking about it. I know that there are a few ways to explain the occurrence, but I know for a fact it was 100% paranormal. Me and my brother still back it up to this day. I've had a lot of weird things happen to me over the years. In my childhood home mostly, which was brand new. My parents hired a contractor to build it. It began with seeing dark shadows throughout the house, just black and grey shapes. It would only happen in a glimpse while entering the room or passing a hallway. I used to wake up to a lot of people standing over me. I've now learnt about sleep paralysis, so I've dismissed a lot of what I saw back then. But I do remember being in the finished basement of the house when I was about 20. I was trying to do my hair into a ponytail while looking into the hall mirror. In the reflection of the mirror, I could see into the room behind me, and there was a man standing there. I could only see half of him. He was wearing something white. He had long, greasy black hair, which was almost matted down. His face was so gaunt. He had black shadows under his eyes. I saw him for a few seconds, and then he was gone. I got my younger brother, and made him go for a walk with me until my parents came home. I used to have very vivid dreams in that house. A few months before seeing the guy in the mirror, I dreamt about a woman, who had almost identical features to the man. Long, greasy, untamed hair, gaunt face, and wearing white. In my dream, she floated down the hall and disappeared. 
Since moving, I haven't really experienced anything. I tend to get sensitive about the atmosphere of certain houses and locations, but luckily I haven't seen anything since. I kind of simultaneously believe and do not believe in the paranormal, but I prefer to think that everything can be explained. But those were some creepy times back then. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed tonight's video, please do not forget to drop a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. Don't forget that I should be posting every night, so why not subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be up to date and never miss a post. I also posted a new video on my second channel. So if you want to watch something really short and quick made by me and my wife, feel free to check it out. It's about a minute and a half long. If there's a story that you wish to share, feel free to post it to my Reddit or send it to my email. Just please be sure to include plenty of description and punctuation, as well as paragraphing in order for your story to be considered for a video. But anyway, for now guys, it's time to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.